little countdown. Um, three, two, one, go. Alrighty, so um, yeah, I'm Tom. Um, this is Astrius. Astrius will be doing some of the commentary, um, maybe a lot of the commentary. We'll see. Hi. Right. Um, you want to explain the reset there while I remember how to get to the options? <laughs> it's um, mostly to skip the starting cutscene of the game and also general timing. Nonsense. Um, if you've not played this game before, it's um, a three-dimensional polygon game. It's very, very enjoyable. But the general premise is that there's four islands, each with four stages, which is an adventure stage, a mini boss, and another adventure stage, and a proper boss. We complete all four stages, and then we get access to the fifth stage, and then it's again four stages, an adventure, a mini boss, an adventure, and then the boss, and then that is the any percent of the game. Um, full well, max power is a like setting in the game where Bomberman starts with everything. So he has max number of bombs available to him, he has max firepower, he has remote bombs, and he has superpowered bombs, which are the, which gives it the red color. Um, this mostly just makes the speedrun significantly faster from this perspective of we don't have to go running around for remote bombs or extra firepower or anything like that. However, there's a, a handful of steps where um, we will have to be careful because the increased firepower is of incredible danger to Tom should the explosion strike him, it will kill Bomberman. Um, it's got, the, the game's got simple, um, uh, Where's the thing? Oh, there it is. <laughs> fantastic speed running. Um, you saw him pick up a like spawn a bomb in his hands and then make it large. It's called pumping up the bomb, and then you can platform off of them. Uh, that's a lot of uh, required mechanics for the hundred percent stuff. We'll be using it for just shortcutting as well as a handful of the sneaky tricks and the like. So, so like that. And that was the first stage of green, so green one. Yep. So here, um, coming up is one of the first mini bosses. Um, this one's a little different. Um, normally, the goal with the mini bosses is pick them up and throw them off the edge as quickly as possible. But in full power mode, for whatever reason, they actually, this one in particular, just doesn't like to do what he normally does. So it's quickest to just blow him up because it takes three bombs to kill him. So you can see even just the smallest bomb generates a very large blast radius. So he has to be careful not to get tagged by it because it will knock him out. He, he did pick up a heart. That will be of good use to us later on in the run. It's also, in case something goes completely wrong, the heart will take buffer a hit for us, um, assuming we don't fall off the ledge. Um, and if we're lucky, we could then pick it back up, I think. Or Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so like doing that boss differently, it gives us that extra chance to we can just get a, bo a heart from him, hopefully, if it they launch out the right way. Because normally we have to find enemies that have hearts, kill them, and then grab the heart. The other power up, uh, um, remote bombs, has the added benefit of Tom can detonate them whenever he wants to, and they don't detonate unless he says so, or an enemy interacts with the bomb, um, and so that rapidly increases a lot of this early stage stuff before you would normally find a remote bomb and hold on to that power. Um, it also makes the f boss fights faster, although they usually give you, like the mini boss fights faster, they, but they usually give you remote bombs for the bigger boss fights because they're quite nasty. The big benefit of having the massive explosion is that the bomb actually collided with an enemy short of the crocodile's mouth, but the blast was so large it killed the enemy and also triggered the crocodile's mouth, so you didn't have to la uh, fire off a second bomb. Yeah, I was sort of saw it, he heard it get stuck, and yeah. I was like, oh, it's not going to get it, and it did get it, so it was good. Hooray! This level in particular is just this annoying bird keeps stealing the exit of the stage. And then he finally gets wiped out by the mini boss that we fought early. Who's the? He's a guy that's trying to help Bobo Man do the job. Um, whatever the adventure plot is, something, something. Bad guys invade. That's it. Um, there's a substantial difference between 
this 80% run and, and uh, all gold cards are 100% run. Um, the reason being that if you go through this game in any percent, <laughs> I don't know how that works. So you're going to have to explain that one. Um, so that one sort of... There's this weird interaction on sloped hills, which like those stairs, where if they intersect with uh, the corner of a block, it you can clip in, I think, and it, the game's like, no, you're not allowed to be there, so it pushes you all the way up. So you sort of just zip up to the top of the... That's that probably a few times. one of two uses. That one was found fairly recently, which is kind of cool. Oh, 40 minutes. Um, the 100% run of this game involves getting all of the gold cards. If you were to beat this game, quote, beat this game without getting the gold cards, you sort of get goaded by the white eagle character. He's like, you got the uh, you beat the bad guy but you, like you didn't do enough and he just sort of like basically scolds you for not getting 100 percent of the game however if you go through collecting all five gold cards for every stage so in the adventure stages it's kill 30 enemies or 60 uh 30 yeah. 30 kill 30 enemies and then they're the rest are all like found around the stage um in the mini boss and boss fights you have to do specific things like bonk the boss in the head, or break parts of the boss, or do something special, and each of them generate a card, and then all of the stages have a timer-based uh, card, which in that, you see that timer on the top left, when it turns red, you've gone past the card's timer. Um, because of the nature of a lot of these cards, the gold cards run requires some stages to be repeated to get all of the gold cards, but when you do this and then beat the fifth stage with all the gold cards you unlock a secret sixth stage so then there's an entire post game like extra a good ending yeah there's like a good ending like sec a section of the entire game that you will never see unless you go through the process painstakingly of getting all the gold cards so hopefully we'll see a mini boss fight quicker good stuff so the key thing about these mini boss fights, these like human face off fights, is that they don't stay stunned for very long at all. It's like fractional amount of time, like a second, maybe less. And when you pick it up, you like get a very limited amount of time to do anything before they throw themselves free of you. Now, sometimes all you need to do is just turn around and face water and when they throw themselves free of you they jump in the direction that you're facing so you, they'll just jump into the water for you but if you can get a throw action in you can throw them further than they would jump not by Oops. much but so you were trying the stairwell yeah, so clip there you can do another one of those clips that i did in that first level um this one's a bit more precise and if you mess this one up you obviously fall in the water but not too much of an issue i can grab a heart somewhere else yeah, the, like, normal 80% way of collecting a heart. Um, this adventure stage wants you to go through this process of lowering all the water and then eventually pushing that, like, you push walls and lift things up um, until eventually you end up with that, like, top square there at, within your reach. But that's silly. We don't want to do that. So we're just going to touch it from here, and that considers it the end of the game, even though, at the end of the level, even though there's no arrow there, that square is just considered the end of the stage. So the we sort of trick our way o into it. The difficult thing is, when you mess up setups in full power, you have to deconstruct your little towers of bombs like I just did there. That's okay. Because you can't just explode them otherwise. You will. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's okay, because in normal any percent, they just detonate on you, and you get owned by them anyway. So at least it gets you to save a little bit of time. Ah. Uh, uh, unfortunate. So this boss um, does different things after every attack, and what the boss does is kind of random. Um, this particular attack, where he like throws blades at you and reduces the size of your stage, is a random, but also the worst one. Um, one of the gold cards for this boss is to have him break your raft down to a single plank of wood and then fight him and then beat him. Which, 
is terrifying if you because most of the runners use the far left block because um, it it even though it looks like it's targeting you specifically, it's just targeting the joint you were standing closest to when he made the attack. So, and then it always breaks whatever half you're not standing on. So by making him target the far left join and then moving to the right, it only breaks one block. But if you were to say, stand on the left of that, it would break the rest of the raft and you would be left on this tiny little strip of land to try and fight off the fish. So now we're on to red, the, the red stage or red mountain or whatever it's called. The um, the other thing that is different with the red bombs, the in, like empowered bombs, is that there's a bunch of enemies that are like resistant to your attacks, and then usually you need to pump up a fully uh, full strength bomb to uh, deal damage to them. But then a red bomb like tears up all of your attacks so then normal red bombs can do damage that regular uh, normal bombs could could never do and so a bunch of the enemies that he's fighting and hitting with these bombs are getting damaged when they would normally just be completely resistant to these attacks um, I guess we could have some time for a host interaction if he wants Thank you very much. We have $20 from Oz Speedruns. They say donation for March revenue, straight to charity. Thanks everyone for your support. This guy's my least favorite mini boss to fight. I think Regulus also has different RNG. So I think it might run off to the left or something. Yeah, it gets stuck on stuff. So I think he's another one where just... Whoa. Blowing him up is the quicker way. Well, that didn't quite hit. Yeah, there we go. Snake oh, I should have grabbed a heart. Yeah. <laughs> ah. This guy's also rude because he does attempt to knock you out. If you're too close to him when that happens, he will hit you with that, like, final blast. And so the unwitting player might not realize and then get owned by it. But yeah, all those mini bosses, the. The best strat is to lure them close to the edge, tag them with a bomb kick, and then just like throw them off the edge, or like line yourself up such that you can throw them off the edge. So uh, they can jump off the edge um, when they re when they free themselves. But uh, they're very fast. They're very resistant. And then once you go past that initial like two seconds of the f start of the fight, it is a complete random uh, fight, and you can't. Like, unless you get silly luck, you can't really predict that you're gonna be able to tag the miniboss near a ledge. So you just have to knock them out with normal bombs. So this is another example where the empowered red bombs are very useful because those mini car, uh, those minecart monsters are resistant to normal bombs, but a little red empowered bomb kills them. So you can just lay bombs, otherwise they continue to track onto you. And they're having the remote bombs there because they just sit there. They'll just explode when they run into them. Whereas if I had regular bombs, they would have already exploded, so wouldn't be able to do the sort of s same thing. Mm. And then you, you didn't want to like try and do a tricky bomb jump onto the ledge. <laughs> I've got the big bomb. I can blow it all up at once. It's yeah, quick. with same. the maximum yeah. <laughs> radius. Yeah. The maximum blast radius is extremely useful for any of the boss fights because you can just hit like everything because most of these bosses have multiple weak spots even to the point where just a kicked little bomb can hit him I'll play it safe and wait for him to do the attack first there we go rude the red stage completed. Just got the white stage to complete. And then we'll move on to the final stage. I'm gonna grab a heart. 
Yes. I'm saying that mostly for me, so I don't forget to do it. This is where you would grab the heart in a normal any percent run. There's these uh, little bunnies. So apologies to anyone who finds them very adorable. They are a valuable source of heart. So, sorry. Um, that's where you would normally grab them in an any percent run because you the you don't really get a chance to grab the hearts off of the mini bosses otherwise. So I drop that bomb down there so that I can detonate it when I get up here, which just means that that house isn't in here, um, because that's spawning enemies and it's creating extra lag. So there's, you can see all this um, snow falling down, which creates just makes it pretty laggy in here. Yeah, this game, like any good N64 game, is laggy. Very laggy. And so little things that you can do to reduce lag, like camera angles and that kind of thing, uh, invaluable in helping gain those extra seconds. So Tom just threw a bomb down to knock down this house in advance so he can get around it. Um, and then he also knocked, uh, got a knockback effect from the snowman because the snowman is not lethal if you touch him. He just bonks you around and did that to just jump down a little bit. And so these stages look very simple because he's just going from A to B in no time. But the whole point of these epi uh, these stages is that you, like, as a player, you're like exploring it. And there's a whole bunch of different areas that you can visit, and some of them are a bit more nuanced and require a bit more playing around. But since we know exactly where we need to go and how to do it, we just go A, B, C, done. Yeah, the next level is a good example of if you know what you're doing, it's super easy, but you can get very lost very quickly. Yeah. So this is the easiest of the mini-bosses because he does this particular attack and stops right at the ledge, which makes him an incredibly easy lineup. So, like, any t any of the categories that fight him, except for gold, all gold cards, um, he's super simple because you just stand near the edge, wait until he charges you, step to the side, knock him off. He makes no effort to preserve himself. And then he runs away. He's like, you're mean, I don't like that. I'm going away, bye. <laughs> oh, whoa. So that little move there, sometimes the penguins get in the way and it's quickest to just drop a bomb, run into them so they bounce you back onto it and then you can jump over them and continue. The level of swag. So these slippery ice sections where the camera forcibly pans underneath, in all of them, in the any percent runs, you just go forward and you will go straight from your entrance to the appropriate exit you need to and you can leave. So you don't have to stuff around with the awkward under ang uh, camera angles, which in a, from a casual player's perspective is the source of many woes and probably a lot of lost lives with the... <laughs> because there's also the penguins running around and they like to knock you about and the whole stage is just slippery, non-stop. I just didn't want to deal with that enemy, so I got rid of that's, it. That's Sometimes fair. that one can just sort of be blocking that little ledge and just knock you off the edge, and that's a life gone. Yeah, he's a, he's a tricky monster. And then when you defeat him, he turns into two little ones, so he takes a little bit of time to knock off. Now we're going to fight Australia, like the whole <laughs> continent. Three hearts, okay. A little bit of damage. That was a very good thing to happen then. I didn't realize it did three hearts in <laughs> full power mode. You almost five star, uh, five carded him. Oh, he didn't even get to do the slam. So when he gets to, I think it's like one heart left, he slams the ground and drops you and him down to this web stage with a whole lot of holes in it. The game is at least kind enough where if you were to just fall straight through a gap into the pit, you are saved, but only once. 
because then after that you got to fight him normally. I think it's three times on three times? Um, normal oh, mode. No. On hard mode, it's he only saves you once. Yeah. yeah. So now we're on to the final stage, um, or final level. Uh, just Black Citadel, or Black City. Um, we're running in traffic, which uh, you should not do. Um, these cars move in a fixed pattern, so it's always a big one on the left, little one on the right, and then a big one on the right. So, using bombs to hop across the the gaps that don't have little ramps, we're able to just run along this flat section directly to the back of the stage, where we can then um, move on to the next half of the level. But normally you would be like up and around and ducking through traffic and uh, dealing with enemies in these like walkways above. But because it's in a perfectly consistent um, pattern, we know exactly where they're going to be at all times and we can just safely navigate around them. So hopefully this bit goes nicely. Excellent. So, Bomberman is now stuck in an animation of not walking. This entire platform that he's on now is a mini boss fight. But because he's done this weird trick where you take damage, lose your heart, fall a distance, and then immediately pick up a bomb, the, the game mixes up a bunch of the animations and basically locks you in place, and it doesn't consider you having entered the area that spawns the boss, but you can immediately exit that, like, stance that you're in by simply picking up another bomb. And so, by doing that, we have skipped an entire, like, mini-mini boss. So having the really large bombs is excellent because it helps uh, deal with a lot of the har- this is boss is called the Harvester. He's been the world of many 80% fights because he's quite dangerous, but those really large remote bombs mean that you can defuse a lot of his attacks with very little effort. You just have to be careful of your own explosions because the perspectives are kind of hard to judge distance. I'd probably consider this to be my favourite stage. It's just it's so much happening. That it's a big stage. Yeah, it's a big stage. There's a lot of um, fun bomb trickery that you'll see. So these... Um, these coloured panels yeah. basically trigger like security and lock doors and then you need to find ways to turn off the security and like open bridges and do all this other stuff. But because we know how to make like miniature staircases and climb objects using bombs, um, rude, we can effectively avoid large numbers of this level um, doing stuff like this. Which makes it a very entertaining run, both to perform and to watch. So this is another example of where max power is a, de a deficit because you would normally have just like a little remote bomb and you can just immediately kick it off the side and detonate it. But because your blast radius is so large, you actually run the risk of tagging yourself by doing that. So we're going to use our gentleman here for assistance. And by assistance, I mean non-assistance. You're just being mean to them. So you skip that entire like laser grid segment to get to this area. So all we wanted to do was to tag that one little area. And then we make a nice little staircase and get up to here. We were not meant to be up here. We we're meant to go through like a whole grid and maze with these bridges and you're pressing switches and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, nah. Just climb vertical objects without a jump button. Get nothing this. spawned up here. Yeah. Sometimes things spawn up there and it's just really annoying. I mean, I guess in full power it's not too much of an issue. I can just blow them up, but it can be really annoying when you're just trying to run through. So that door, you would normally need a fully powered bomb to blow up, but the red empowerment means that he can just kick a small one out. And, uh, any time for last run of donations and the like. Well, we don't have any more donations to read out, but just wanted to remind everyone that we are Oz Speedruns. We are a group doing speedrun events to raise money for charity. 
This event we're raising money for Game on Cancer, a charity which funds early career cancer researchers who are working across all areas of cancer research. If you'd like to donate, <laughs> you can go to donate.ozspeedruns.com. Don't swallow it. <laughs> now it's up for the, the hardest boss in the game. Are you ready? No, I think Angle? I got this. I, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, are you ready? No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is a two phase fight. Ah, there we go. That's the first phase done. <laughs> Very nice. That one's actually kind of tricky because if you miss that, the fight goes out of control very fast. That little mask shoots laser beams that are one shots. And they're very fast and very sudden. And he, often the mask is off screen so you don't see where he is and then suddenly this little laser beam goes pew! It just takes you out. And you're like, oh. So now he's going to power up, get super strong, super dangerous. Alright, that's time. So it turns out that for some reason his stun duration is enormous for this stage. So you just immediately kick a bomb to him and he's stunned. He, he's stunned for like five seconds. So it's you can good, pick him yeah. up, do a little spin, and then just throw him off the edge. The spins are just for show, you don't need it. Do yeah, spin. no, no need for the spin. <laughs> spin's just for swag. Yeah, that's Bomberman 64.